sort of rubbed my hair. You're an okay kid, Pony. I had to grin at him. Soda can make you grin no matter what. I guess it's because he's always grinning so much himself. You're crazy, Soda. Out of your mind. Derry looked as if he'd like to knock our heads together. You're both nuts. Soda merely cocked an eyebrow. A trick he'd picked up from 2-Bit. It seems to run in this family. Derry stared at him for a second, then cracked a grin. Soda Pop isn't afraid of him, like everyone else, and enjoys teasing him. I'd just as soon tease a full-grown grizzly, but for some reason, Derry seems to like being teased by Soda. Our gang had chased the Scots to their car and heaved rocks at them. They came running toward us now, four lean, hard boys. They were all as tough as nails and looked it. I had grown up with them, and they accepted me, even though I was younger, because I was Derry and Soda's kid brother, and I kept my mouth shut good. Steve Randall was seventeen, tall and lean, with thick, greasy hair. He kept combed and complicated squirrels. He was cocky, smart, and Soda's best buddy since grade school. Steve's specialty was cars. He could lift a hubcat quicker and more quietly than anyone in the neighborhood. But he also knew cars upside down and backward, and he could drive anything on wheels. He and Soda worked at the same gas station. Steve part-time and Soda full-time. And their station got more customers than any other in town. Whether that was because Steve was so good with cars or because Soda attracted girls like honey draw flies, I couldn't tell you. I liked Steve only because he was Soda's best friend. He didn't like me. He thought I was a tag-along and a kid. Soda always took me with them when they went places if they weren't taking girls, and that bugged Steve. It wasn't my fault. Soda always asked me. I didn't ask him. Soda doesn't think I'm a kid. Two-Bit Matthews was the oldest of the gang and the wisecracker of the bunch. He was about six feet tall, stocky in build, and very proud of his long, rusty-colored sideburns. He had gray eyes and a wide grin, and he couldn't stop making funny remarks to save his life. He couldn't shut that guy up. He always had to get his two bits worth in. Hence his name. Even his teachers forgot his real name was Keith, and we hardly remembered he had one. Life was one big joke to Two-Bit. He was famous for shoplifting and his black-handled switchblade, which he couldn't have acquired without his first talent. And he was always smarting off to cops. He really couldn't help it. Everything he said was so irresistibly funny that he just had to let the police had to let the police in on it to brighten up their dull lives. That's the way he explained it to me. He liked fights, blondes, and for some unfathomable reason, school. He was still a junior at 18, I'm sorry, he was still a junior at 18 and a half, and he never learned anything. He just went for kicks. I liked him real well because he kept us laughing at ourselves as well as other things. He reminded me of Will Rogers. Maybe it was the grin. If I had to pick the real character of the gang, it would be Dallas Winston. Dally. I used to like to draw his picture when he was in a dangerous mood but then I could get his personality down in a few lines. He had an elfish face with high cheekbones and a pointed chin, small, sharp animal teeth, and ears like a lynx. His hair was almost white, it was so blonde, and he didn't like haircuts or hair oil either, so it fell over his shoulders in wisps and kicked out in the back in tufts and curled behind his ears and along the nape of his neck. His eyes were blue, blazing ice, cold with a hatred of the whole world. Dally had spent three years on the wild side of New York and had been arrested at the age of ten. He was tougher than the rest of us. Tougher, colder, meaner. The shade of difference that separates a greaser from a hood wasn't present in Dally. He was as wild as the boys in the downtown outfits, like Tim Shepard's gang. In New York, Dally blew off steam in gang fights. But here, organized crimes are rarities. There are just small bunches of friends who stick together, and the warfare is between the social classes. A rumble, when it's called, is usually born of a grudge fight, and the opponents just happen to bring their friends along. Oh, there are a few named gangs around, like the River Kings and the Tiber Street Tigers, but here in the Southwest, that's no gang rivalry. 
rivalry. So Dally, even though he could get into a good fight sometimes, had no specific thing to hate, no rival gang, only socks. And you can't win against them no matter how hard you try, because they've got all the breaks, and even whipping them isn't going to change that fact. Maybe that was why Dallas was so bitter. He had quite a reputation. They have a file on him down at the police station. He had been arrested, he got drunk, he rode in rodeos, lied, cheated, stole, rolled drunks, jumped small kids, he did everything. I didn't like him, but he was smart and he had to respect him. Johnny Cade was last and least. If you could picture a little dark puppy that has been kicked too many times and is lost in a crowd of strangers, you'll have Johnny. He was the youngest next to me, smaller than the rest, with a slight build. He had big black eyes and a dark tan face. His hair was jet black and heavily greased and combed to the side, but it was so long that it fell in shaggy bangs across his forehead. He had a nervous, suspicious look in his eyes, and that beating he got from the socks didn't help matters. He was the gang's pet, everyone's kid brother. His father was always beating him up, and his mother ignored him, except when she was hacked off at something, and then you could hear her yelling at him clear down at our house. I think he hated that worse than getting whipped. He would have run away a million times if we hadn't been there. If it hadn't been for the gang, Johnny would never have known what love and affection are. I wiped my eyes hurriedly. Did you catch him? Nope. They got away this time, the dirty. Tupit went on cheerfully, calling the Scots every name he could think of or make up. The kid's okay? I'm okay. I tried to think of something to say. I'm usually pretty quiet around people, even the gang. I changed the subject. I didn't know you were out of the cooler yet, Dally. Good behavior. Got off early. Dallas lit a cigarette and handed it to Johnny. Everyone sat down to have a smoke and relax. A smoke always lessens the tension. I had quit trembling and my color was back. The cigarette was calming me down. Two-bit cocked an elbow. Nice looking bruise you got there, kid. I touched my cheek gingerly. Really? Two-bit nodded sagely. Nice cut, too. Makes you look tough. Tough and tough are two different words. Tough is the same as rough. Tough, T-U-F-F, -F, means cool, sharp, like a tough looking Mustang or a tough record. In our neighborhood, both are compliments. Steve flicked his ashes at me. What were you doing walking by your lonesome? Leave it to good old Steve to bring up something like that. I was coming home from the movies. I didn't think you don't ever think, Gary broke in. Not at home or anywhere when it counts. You must think at school, with all those good grades you bring home, and you always got your nose in a book, but do you ever use your head for common sense? No sir bug. And if you did have to go by yourself, you should have carried a blade. I just stared at the hole in the toe of my tennis shoe. Me and Derry didn't just, just didn't dig each other. I never could please him. He would have hollered at me for carrying a blade if I had carried one. If I brought home B's, he wanted A's. If I got A's, he wanted to make sure they stayed A's. If I was playing football, I should be in studying. And if I was reading, I should be out playing football. He never hollered at Soda Pop. Not even when Soda dropped out of school or got tickets for speeding. He just hollered at me. Soda was glaring at him. Leave my kid brother alone, you hear? It ain't his fault he likes to go to the movies. And it ain't his fault the Sox like to jump us. And if he had been carrying a blade, it would have been a good excuse to cut him to ribbons. Soda always takes up for me. Derry said impatiently, When I want my kid brother to tell me what to do with my other kid brother, I'll ask you, kid brother. But he laid off me. He always does when Soda Pop tells him to. Most of the time. Next time get one of us to go with you, pony boy, Tubit said. Any of us will. Speaking of movies, Dally yawned, flipping away his cigarette butt. I'm walking over to the nightly double tomorrow night. Anybody want to come and hunt some action? Steve shook his head. Me and Soda are picking up Evie and Sandy for the game. He didn't need to look at me the way he did right then. I wasn't going to ask if I could come. I'd never tell Soda, because he really liked Steve a lot. 
But sometimes I can't stand Steve Randall. I mean it. Sometimes I hate him. Derry sighed, just like I knew he would. Derry never had time to do anything anymore. I'm working tomorrow night. Dally looked at the rest of us. How about y'all? Two bit? Johnny Cake? You and Pony want to come? Me and Johnny will come, I said. I knew Johnny wouldn't open his mouth unless he was forced to. Okay, Derry? Yeah, since it ain't a school night. Derry was real good about letting me go places on the weekends. On school nights, I could hardly leave the house. I was planning on getting boozed up tomorrow night, Tubit said. If I don't, I'll walk over and find y'all. Steve was looking at Dally's hand. His ring, which he had rolled a which he had rolled a drunk senior to get, was back on his finger. You break up with Sylvie again? Yeah, and this time it's for good. That little broad was two timing me again when I went to jail. I thought of Sylvia and Evie and Sandy and two bits many blondes. They were the only kinds of girls that would look at us, I thought. Tough, loud girls who wore too much eye makeup and giggled and swore too much. I liked Soda's girl Sandy just fine, though. Her hair was natural blonde and her laugh was soft like her china blue eyes. She didn't have a real good home or anything and was our kind, greaser, but she was a real nice girl. Still, lots of times I wondered what other girls were like. The girls who were bright-eyed and had little dresses a decent length and acted as if they liked to spit on us to give an Get spit on us if given a chance. Some were afraid of us, and remembering Dallas Winston, I didn't blame them. But most looked at us like we were dirt, gave us the same kind of look that the Sox did when they came by in their Mustangs and Corvairs and yelled grease at us. I wondered about them. The girls, I mean. Did they cry when their boys were arrested, like Evie did when Steve got hauled in? Or did they run out on them the way Sylvia does Dallas? But maybe their boys didn't get arrested or beaten up or busted up in rodeos. I was thinking about it while I was doing my homework that night. I had to read Great Expectations for English, and that kid, Pip, he reminded me of us. The way he felt marked lousy because he wasn't a gentleman or anything, and the way that girl kept looking down on him. That happened to me once. One time in biology, I had to dissect a worm, and the razor wouldn't cut, so I used my switchblade. The minute I flipped it out, I forgot what I was doing or I would never have done it. This girl right beside me kind of gasped and said, They are right. You are a hood. That didn't make me feel so hot. There were a lot of socks in that class. I get put into A classes because I'm supposed to be smart, and most of them thought it was pretty funny. I didn't, though. She was a cute girl. She looked real good in yellow. We deserve a lot of our trouble, I thought. Dallas deserves everything he gets. It should get worse if you want the truth. And two bit, he doesn't really want or need half the things he swipes from stores. He just thinks it's fun to swipe everything that isn't nailed down. I can understand why Soda Pop and Steve get into drag races and fight so much, though. Both of them have too much energy, too much feeling, with no way to blow it off. Rub harder, Soda, I heard Derry mumbling. You're gonna put me to sleep. I looked through the door. Soda, was, Soda Pop was giving Derry a back rub. Derry is always pulling muscles. He roofs houses, and he's always trying to carry two bundles of roof up the ladder. I knew Soda would put him to sleep, because Soda can put out anyone when he sets his head to it. He thought Derry worked too hard anyway. I did too. Derry didn't deserve to work like an old man when he was only 20. He had been a real popular guy in school. He was captain of the football team, and he had been voted boy of the year. But we just didn't have the money for him to go to college, even with the athletic scholarship he won. And now he didn't have time between jobs to even think about college. So he never went anywhere, and never did anything anymore, except work out at gyms and go skiing with some old friends of his sometimes. I rubbed my cheeks where it had turned purple. I had looked in the mirror, and it did, and it did make me laugh. It did... <sighs> Run it back. I rubbed my cheek where it had turned purple. I had looked in the mirror, and it did make me look tough. But Derry had made me put a band-aid on the cut. I remember how awful Johnny had looked when he got beaten up. 
I had just as much right to use the streets as the Sox did, and Johnny had never hurt them. Why did the Scots hate us so much? We left them alone. I nearly went to sleep over my homework trying to figure it out. Soda Pump, Soda Pop, who had jumped into bed by this time, yelled sleepily for me to turn off the light and get to bed. When I finished the chapter I was on, I did. Lying beside Soda, staring at the wall, I kept remembering the faces of the socks as they surrounded me. That blue madras shirt the blonde was wearing, and I could still hear a thick voice. Need a haircut, greaser? I shivered. You cold, pony boy? A little, I lied. Soda threw one arm across my neck. He mumbled something drowsily. Listen, kiddo, when Derry hollers at you, he don't mean nothing. He's just got more worries than somebody his age ought to. Don't take him serious. You dig, Pony? Don't let him bug you. <clears throat> He's really proud of you because you're so brainy. It's just because you're the baby, I mean. He loves you a lot. Savvy? Sure, I said, trying for Soda's sake to keep the sarcasm out of my voice. Soda? Yeah? How come you dropped out? I never have gotten over that. I could hardly stand it when he left school. Because I'm dumb. The only things I was passing anyway were auto mechanics and gym. You're not dumb. Yeah, I am. Shut up and I'll tell you something. Don't tell Derry, though. Okay. I think I'm going to marry Sandy after she gets out of school and I get a better job and everything. I might wait till you get out of school, though, so I can still help Derry with the bills and stuff. Tough enough. Wait till I get out, though, so you can keep Derry off my back. Don't be like that, kid. I told you he don't mean half of what he says. You in love with Sandy? What's it like? Hmm. He sighed happily. It's real nice. In a moment, his breathing was light and regular. I turned my head to look at him, and in the moonlight, we looked like some, he looked like some Greek god come to earth. I wondered how he could stand being so handsome. Then I sighed. I didn't quite get what he meant about Derry. Derry thought I was just another mouth to feed and somebody to holler at. Derry love me? I thought of those hard, pale eyes. Soda was wrong for once, I thought. Derry doesn't love anyone or anything except maybe Soda. I didn't hardly think of him as being human. I don't care, I lied to myself. I don't care about him either. Soda's enough. And I'd have him until I got out of school. I don't care what Derry. I don't care about Derry. But I was still lying, and I knew it. I lie to myself all the time, but I never believe me. Alright guys, that's the end of chapter one. Join me tomorrow for chapter two.